this lesson, we're looking over a number of algebraic properties. Um, and we're just going to quickly review over these first five. They are either properties that you should already know, or it's just giving a name to a concept that should be very familiar to you. So the first property is the commutative property, and that property says that you can add or multiply numbers in any order. The order in which you combine them does not matter. Um, so here my examples are 1 plus 2 equals 2 plus 1. Either way, my answer is going to be 3. Um, my other example is 3 times 4 equals 4 times 3. No matter how I multiply it, that answer is going to be 12. This property does not apply to subtraction or division. Uh, so if I sub if I substituted this with subtraction, 1 minus 2 would equal negative 1. 2 minus 1 would equal 1. And negative 1 does not equal positive 1. So it does not work for subtraction. And similarly for division, 3 divided by 4 would give me 3 fourths or a number less than 1. Um, while 4 divided by 3 would give me 1 and 1 third or a number greater than 1. So obviously those are not equal either. So just addition and multiplication. That same rule applies to the associative property. And the associative property says that you can change the grouping of numbers as long as it's all addition or all multiplication. So here, if I have all addition, <clears throat> I can do 5 plus, and then in parentheses, 6 plus 7, which would be the same thing as doing 5 plus 6 first, then plus 7. Um, this property isn't super helpful when we're only using numbers. We will start using this property where one of these um, numbers on the inside will actually be a variable. 5 plus 6 plus x equals, you can do the 5 plus 6 first and then plus x. So we can actually simplify it to 11 plus x instead of it being separated like this. So that's why this property is useful. It's not particularly useful um, with just numbers, although sometimes it is easier to add a large sum of numbers by adding certain ones first or multiplying certain ones first. Um, but anyway, so that's the associative property. The additive identity property just says that whenever you add zero to a number, that number will never change. Adding zero always leaves that number the same. Um, the multiplicative identity is similar. Multiplying anything by one, that number will never change. It's always going to stay the same and keep its identity. And the last um, quick review property we're going to do is the multiplicative property of zero. And that is kind of exactly like it sounds. If you multiply something by zero, it will always equal zero. So these are properties uh, because they are always true. And so we just gave a name to them. Okay, the property we're going to spend the most time on today is the distributive property. I mean, this distributive property lets you simplify a problem by multiplying the number on the outside of the parentheses to both of the numbers inside. And this property is only going to work if this number on the outside is being multiplied. So here I have two times, and then in parentheses, inside the parentheses, it either has to be addition or subtraction. If it's multiplication inside the parentheses, we would just use the associative rule, or I'm sorry, the associative property, not the distributive property. So just addition or subtraction. And I need to distribute this 2 to both of the things inside the parentheses. And let's look why. Um, so ignoring the distributive property to begin with, 7 plus 4, because I have to do parentheses first, 7 plus 4 is going to be 11. 2 times 11 would be 22. Lost my green pen. I'll use a red one. Okay. Well, by using the distributive property, I'm going to do 2 times 7 and 2 times 4. So here I have 2 times 7 is 14, plus, because there was a plus in the middle, 2 times 4 is 8. 14 plus 8 is also...
also going to be 22. So I can say that in order for these two expressions to be equivalent or equal to each other, I have to distribute this 2 to both. Because if you don't, the most common mistake that I see students make is when you have this problem, they will only distribute the 2 to the 7, and we end up with 2 times 7 plus 4. We know the answer should be 22, but if we look and solve 2 times 7, it's going to be 14 plus 4. 14 plus 4 is 18. Oh, sorry. Um, this expression is obviously not equivalent. Um, and the idea is that when I add 7 plus 4 and get 11, I multiply 2 times the whole 11, which means that if I distribute it to change how it's written, I need to make sure I'm multiplying by everything that was added on the inside and not just the first thing. Um, that's how we get this equivalent expression. Okay, so remember if there is no operation between the parentheses and the number in front of it. So here it's just an 8 hanging out in front. It does mean to multiply. The implication is that it's multiplication. Okay, so let's look at using the distributive property. <clears throat> um, these arrows are super helpful for remembering to do everything. So I'm going to say 8 times x and 8 times 3. Okay, so writing that down, it's going to be 8 times x, 8 times x, plus in the middle, plus 8 times 3. And I can simplify this. I can simplify this to... Uh, just 8 times x, I don't know what x equals, so it stays the same. You can either write it exactly like this, or I'm actually going to write it without the multiplication sign. I'm just going to write 8x plus 8 times 3 is 24. Okay, and that's as simple as I can make it. I have changed from uh, a number um, being a sum in parentheses times a number uh, to now just a sum. And I leave the variable in there because I don't know what x equals. Okay, same thing here. I need to do 2 times 9 plus 2 times z. And we can do this step here in our heads. You don't have to write this one out. 2 times 9 is 18. And 2 times z, I'm just going to write as 2z. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is actually doing this property backwards. They're going to give us this is our problem and we need to, we call it factoring, we need to factor back so that our answer looks like this. Um, and we're just going to start with only numbers. We're not going to use variables to begin with. Eventually we will uh, do it with a variable, which is when this property would, or this um, procedure would be most useful. Okay, so factor and expression. So this is still in the same lesson. It's just a, a separate thing. So to factor an expression, you use the distributive property backwards. Uh, the steps here are going to be to find the greatest common factor. And once you've found the greatest common factor, we're going to divide both of these numbers by the greatest common factor, and that's how we get what's left in parentheses. So let's look at my note card real quick to look at these steps. Okay, so factoring. Step one, find the GCF. Divide both numbers by the GCF and rewrite the expression. So here, 9 plus 21, my greatest common factor is 3, so I can divide both of these by 3. I'm going to pull that out of the parentheses. So 3 times, and then I have to do 9 divided by 3 is 3, plus in the middle, 21 divided by 3 is 7. So that's how I get what's in the parentheses. And then we can double check to make sure that that works and that I did everything correctly. Um, by then using the distributive property, um, to write it back in this form again. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 3 times 7 is 21. 
we can see I arrived back at my answer, so when I factored, I factored it correctly. Okay, so I'm just going to write the steps on this first one. So I'm going to find the greatest common factor, then I'm going to divide the numbers by the greatest common factor, and then I'm going to rewrite the expression. I'm going to rewrite. Okay, so the greatest common factor of 14 and 28, um, remember that if you forget how to find greatest common factor, that is something that we do have a note card on. Greatest common factor, there's two ways to do it, and you should have examples on the back of actually how to solve it. I prefer to use method two, um, where you just find something you can divide both of the numbers by, and then for greatest common factor, we're only multiplying all the numbers on the side. So two times two, my greatest common factor there is four. But if you can just look at this and tell the greatest common factor, that's absolutely okay. You don't have to do any work for it. Okay, but the greatest common factor of 14 and 28 is going to be 14. So I'm gonna divide both of these numbers by 14. So 14 divided by 14 is one. 28 divided by 14 is 2. So when I rewrite this, my greatest common factor is going to go on the outside, 14 times. And then after I divided them each by 14, those are the numbers in the parentheses. So 1, it was addition, so plus 2. And remember, we can double check to make sure that answer is correct by then using the distributive property. 14 times 1 and 14 times 2. Well, 14 times 1 is 14, plus 14 times 2 is 28. Okay, factor a subtraction problem. So I'm going to find the greatest common factor first. So my greatest common factor is going to be 8. Okay, and I'm going to skip this step here. I'm not going to write it out. I'm just going to do it in my head. Okay, so I know the greatest common factor goes on the outside of the parentheses. 80 divided by 8 is going to be 10 minus 56 divided by 8 is 7. And you can tell if you got the greatest common factor correct because neither of these numbers should have any factors in common. If you end up with something like 20 minus 14, where they're both even, and you could divide them both by 2, that means that you didn't actually find the greatest common factor. You just found a common factor. Um, but that's it. We could double check we did it right. 80 minus 56. Okay, now I start with variables. So nothing is going to change. When I'm finding the greatest common factor, I still only worry about uh, my numbers there. Um, it's just that, just like in the front of this page, how, oops, sorry, how the z just hangs on there, I do 2 times z is just 2z. When I divide something, I just divide the numbers, but the variable still hangs out there. So the greatest common factor between 4 and 2 is 2. And now I need to do 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. And there is actually a more simple way to write this problem. Um, because if I just have 1x, the coefficient here is 1 then um, I can actually just write this as an x because the identity property says anything multiplied times 1 is always going to stay the same. So I would not mark it incorrect for you writing it like this. However, if it was multiple choice or if it asked for it in simplest form, like uh, factor this and write in simplest form, then um, you would actually have to get rid of that one coefficient there um, because it doesn't actually do anything or tell you anything extra. If there's
there's just an x there. I know it's just one x. Okay, last problem. I'm gonna factor nine y minus 12. So again, ignore the variable, find the greatest common factor, which is gonna be three. Nine divided by three is three. Since the y is right here, I'm just gonna leave the y. Instead of having nine y's, I have three y's. Minus 12 divided by three is four. And that is uh, algebraic properties.